Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Builds by Bailey. Uh, today, uh, we actually get to do something cool. I'm on my way to North Carolina to buy some parts for the Corolla. So sit back, enjoy, and watch the ride. Well, I hope you enjoyed that quick little cruise to the mountains. As you can tell, I'm wearing different clothes, so therefore it's a different day. So I went to a place in North Carolina called Cutworm Specialties. Uh, they're a custom fab shop that makes a whole bunch of random stuff. It's a one guy operation. Uh, occasionally he might have a helper or something, but he does a lot of uh, one-off vehicles. Uh, he'll straight make a car from scratch, uh, but he happened to make a uh, custom uh, disc brake conversion kit for the Corolla that I have. He's got a couple of them himself and he enjoys drifting so as opposed to buying these expensive kits from other people he decided to make his own. So I bought one of those kits from him and had him do a couple other things uh, to the rear axle of the Corolla while he had it. Um, we went ahead and we had the uh, crush sleeve that's inside of the axle. We went ahead and took that out and made a solid one so that way whenever you pull up on the e-brake it doesn't cram the pinion into the ring gear causing the pinion gear and the ring gear to basically explode upon each other. So we made a solid one of those. Uh, I got a whole new set of parts to put in it so we're going to make a little mini series here of rebuilding this rear axle and putting it in place and I might do some more making, fabricating some parts. I haven't decided yet. I might just, might just buy, uh, well, I'll tell you. So on the Corolla, there is a four link system in the back. So uh, on that, there's just two bars that come off of each side, uh, one on top, one on the bottom, and then there's a pan hard bar that keeps the axle from shifting side to side. So uh, to, yeah, Techno Toy Tuning makes an adjustable kit for that, so that way your track is straight or you can set it up slightly sideways if you wanted to do circle track or something like that. I'm not ever going to do that, so it'll always be straight. But it'll allow me to fix stuff in case I hit a wall or something while I'm drifting it. I can adjust it real quick and pull everything back and make it true so it'll track straight. Uh, they sell a kit. It's $390 for the four pieces and then $145 for the pan hard bar by itself. I feel like I can buy all of the materials and build it myself for just around 200 bucks as opposed to spending over $500 for it. So I might build it myself, I might not, I haven't decided yet. It might just be as easy as clicking on the keyboard and buying the product and getting it here as opposed to me spending time trying to build all of it, which I don't think would be that hard, but in the case that it would be, I haven't decided yet. So uh, that's in the works. But right now, I'm gonna show you all the parts that I got and how it all works. So here's the rear axle out of the car. Um, this is the uh, crush sleeve that's attached to the pinion. You take out the top hat here for the pinion take that off, take the seal out of it, um, and then the top bearing, you can take that out, and then right as soon as you take that out, this crush sleeve is up in there. Um, it is tapered, as you can see, or not really tapered, but stepped. The top half is smaller in diameter than the bottom half is. So if you make a solid one of these, you have to step it on the inside, um, or get one that is big enough, uh, or tight enough, I should say, to fit down on the bigger part of it. So that way when it sits on the top bearing that uh, it doesn't shimmy around. So if you're making one of these um, then like I said make sure that it'll fit right and fit snug so that way it doesn't cause wobble and wear other parts out. So we made one of those. So there's a solid one of those inside here now. 
And then I kind of went crazy and ordered a bunch of stuff from Rock Auto. Uh, if you haven't ever heard of rockauto.com, by all means go to it and buy your car parts from there because you will be uh, very surprised at how cheap you're going to get seals and bearings and gaskets, uh, brake parts, all sorts of stuff that you're going to need, uh, how cheap you'll be able to get it at. And sometimes it'll look fishy, uh, or not really fishy, just look kind of strange. Um, if it tells you it's going to fit, it's going to fit. So uh, I bought uh, all of my bearings, which are all name brand bearings, Timken, National, um, all of that stuff. So I got all new bearings for the outside uh, of the axle, and I got uh, new seals for the entire thing. Even got a gasket for the chunk, which is crazy. I got, I got all of those seals and bearings for $25 which is crazy. If you would buy that from like O'Reilly's or AutoZone, you would spend every bit of $75 on those parts. Um, so I got those for next to nothing. Uh, the next part is, uh, these are the custom brackets that fit onto the outside of the axle. This is where the new uh, calipers are gonna mount. Yes, I said calipers. I'm mounting a dual caliper setup on it. So this is gonna fit on like that. There'll be a caliper here and there'll be a caliper here. Um, that'll sit on top and one off to the side. Um, it uses Mazda Protege calipers and uh, 240SX front rotors. Yes, front rotors. So they're gonna be wide, they're gonna vent. Uh, they'll be able to handle the stress of pulling the e-brake and locking those rear wheels up. Um, and they clear 15 inch wheels, which is crazy. I know, they clear 15s, which is what I'm gonna be running on the car. So uh, I won't be able to put the 13s back on it once I do that, so I'm gonna have to buy tires here very soon. Um, but we'll enjoy building this real quick over the next week or two uh, while those new tires come in. So I bought uh, calipers, like I said. Um, these are for a Mazda Protege, and these happen to come preloaded. And when I say preloaded, they already had uh, brake pads in them. So I've got brake pads in them already. Uh, they're zinc coated. Uh, they have a little bit of oxidation on them, but I can kind of scuff that off a little bit. It won't be too big of a deal, and then I can even paint these if I wanted to. Um, but it came with hardware, so I've got new bolts for it, um, and it even came with the copper crush washers to go on the back side where the brake hose goes to. And I've got four of those. They were $19 a piece. $19. And then I got my 240 front brake disc, um, and they were $7 a piece. So I basically built a big brake kit, dual caliper uh, setup, fixed the rear end and made it stronger, uh, all for uh, less than $350, which is nuts. So the next thing will be to upgrade the disc size in the front. Uh, there's a few ways to do that. I might buy a Willwood kit for the front, just so I have something that's nice, but at the same time, I want to be able to buy parts for it if I can at a local store if I needed to in a pinch. So if I'm out of state somewhere uh, drifting or driving the car and a caliper goes out, I want to be able to fix that. So uh, one of the ways to do that is to make sure that you know what parts are on your car. So I'm going to start a book of the random stuff that I'm customizing and making for it. Um, and that'll stay in the glove box or somewhere inside the car that's an easy access. So if I'm, say, in Kentucky or something, uh, hours away from the house, um, and I'm stranded in the car, I can go to the auto parts store and say, hey, I need a rear left brake caliper for a Mazda Protege and put that on there. Uh, and they may or may not have it in stock, but if they did, I wouldn't be stranded. Um, just more common parts that you would see at the store as opposed to me buying an aftermarket kit like a Willwood kit uh, You 
can't just buy those. You have to go to a specialty store or order them offline. So uh, that was my thought process on that. Um, these custom brackets, no one makes them. So I went to the one place in the country that did. They just happened to be a couple of hours away. Uh, and while I was there, I saw this really awesome car. Um, the owner of Cutworn Specialties uh, let me take some video of it. So here is his uh, Corolla wagon, uh, also named Jawbreaker. Here is go back, 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 back. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little update. I hope you enjoyed Jawbreaker. That's one badass car. Um, sorry for the language, but that's just how you explain that car. Uh, his, his shop is just amazing. Uh, I wish I would have asked him a little bit earlier if I could have filmed inside, but I have a feeling I'm going to be going back uh, here soon to have some other stuff done. So, uh, with that being said, uh, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share with your friends, um, make sure you give it that like button though because that's what uh, makes it share to other people. So thanks again and enjoy.